بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سورة الليل is a Meccan سورة uh, the name of the surah is al-layl according to majority of the scholars it was uh, revealed after سورة الأعلى and before al-fajr the reason of revelation scholars different, uh, mentioned two different reasons one of them uh, is that it was regarding Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu when he bought Bilal alayhi min Allah al-Ridwan uh, from uh, Umayya ibn Khalaf and Ubayy ibn Khalaf and then he set him free for the sake of Allah so Allah azza wa jal sent Wallayli idha yawsha now and Allah azza wa jal in the surah inna sa'yakum lashatta uh, your striving, your efforts are uh, different. Uh, the scholar said it's the difference between the actions of Abu Bakr and uh, Umayyah and Ubay uh, ibn Khalaf. Uh, the second reason of revelation stated by some of the scholars uh, is that it is about a story of uh, a man who uh, owned a palm tree and his neighbor was a poor man with children whenever that man would climb the tree to get some of the dates and they would fall uh, the children of that poor man would pick whatever falls and would try to eat it that man would go down and actually takes it out of their mouth uh, and take it away from them so uh, the man complained to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, about the behavior of the owner of the tree. So the Prophet ﷺ spoke to the owner of the tree and he said, uh, would you give up this tree for a tree, a palm tree in Jannah? Uh, he said, I have so many palm trees and this is the dearest, most beloved tree to me. I wouldn't give it up uh, for that. Uh, so one of the people of the, from the companions and one of the narrations said it is Abu Dahdah who said that. Uh, he said, O Prophet of Allah, uh, if I was to buy it and give it, would you still give, is the offer still good, valid? Would I still get that palm tree in Jannah? SubhanAllah, look how keen they were on Jannah. He said, yes, alayhi salatu wasalam. So he hastened to the man, the owner of that palm tree, and he said uh, about that offer from the Prophet sallallahu Why don't you sell it to me then? He said, I wouldn't sell this unless it's really something that's worth it. He said, what is worth it for you? He said, 40 palm trees in return. If someone offers me 40 palm trees, I would give up this one. He said, you got it. You take 40 of my palm trees and I take yours. So he agreed. He brought two people to testify. So the deal has is, is got witnesses on it. And he hastened to the Prophet And he said that the palm tree is now owned by me. And uh, I'm giving it up for that palm tree in Jannah. This uh, is the opinion of Ikrimah reported from Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhum ajma'in. Allah says, وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَى وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا تَجَلَّى By the night when it covers with darkness and by the day when it appears. Allah Azza wa Jal is swearing by these two signs, two cosmic signs, Ya Hamukallah. Is swearing by the night when it covers the earth with its darkness and by the day when it exposes everything, makes everything clear. Two contrasts. 
سبحان الله والله يا أخي I swear by Allah if if people only think when they read the Quran I'm talking about Muslims let's not talk about non-Muslims if people only think when they read the Quran they will not help but be obedient to Allah Azza wa Jal. These, these signs are clear manifestations of His exaltedness and greatness, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا خَلَقَ الذَّكَرَ وَالْأُنْثَىٰ And by He who created the male and the female. Allah Azza wa Jal is swearing by things that have opposites. The day and the night. Male and female. Because this in itself, again, the ability of, to, of creating things in contrast is a reflection of His greatness, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, what is so significant about creating a male and a female? Well, how, how, is, how is a human being created? It's when the man's sperm, drop of sperm, fertilizes the woman's egg in the womb. So it's a sperm and it's an egg. And the womb is one. So how can some come out as males and come, some come out as females? That's the creation of Allah. That's the ability of Allah. That's the might of Allah. Yes, despite that, the fact that modern science and knowledge uh, discovered some of the uh, factors that make this result in a male and this result in... But the point here still, who put these factors into being to make this a male and to make this a female? There must be a creator behind, a great creator behind that. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna sa'yakum lashatta. Allah is swearing. And this is the, the result. This is the awaited statement. Indeed, your efforts are diverse. Your efforts are diverse. Look at the behavior of Abu Bakr and the two children of Umayyah. Look at the effort of that Muslim who possessed that palm tree and refrained from giving it up for a palm tree in Jannah and the effort of Abu Dahdah radiallahu anhum ajma'in. Indeed, people's efforts are diverse. Allah Azza wa Jal is swearing by these facts and phenomena that people's efforts are going to be different. People differ in their natures, in the culture, in, their, uh, in things that uh, are of importance to them. Uh, when, when you look at people as individuals, you feel that each one is a world on his own, you know? It's like he's living on a, on a planet on his own. He's got his own inclinations, his own interests, his own knowledge, his own background, his own objectives, his own means of fulfilling these objectives. And naturally, this results in the difference in convictions and behavior that reflects directly on the results, the end results in the hereafter. And therefore, their uh, end in the hereafter, whether it is Jannah or Nar, it is paradise or hell, is going to be uh, difference, uh, different. But it is a fair recompense. فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى 
This is one class of people. This is one category, one type of people. Allah is saying, your efforts are diverse. Well, this is one type. And then he's going to address the second type. As for he who gives and fears Allah and believes in the best reward, we will ease him toward ease. He who sacrifices, gives up his life, his wealth for the sake of Allah, he who tries to protect himself from the anger of Allah Azza and his punishment, he who believes in proper aqidah, this word which was mocked by some people, ignorantly mocked by some people, contemporary people, uh, without which our end result will be destroyed. Uh, those who exert their utmost efforts in purifying their souls and hearts uh, and maintaining themselves upon guidance, they become deserving of Allah Azza wa facilitating their affairs and matters. Uh, you know, Facilitating your matters towards ease. Ease here is pertaining to this dunya and to the akhirah. You know when at, at times you feel like, if I may, you feel light. You know, you're, you're ready to perform acts of worship. Adhan is called, you immediately hasten to the masjid. Monday comes, okay, you fast. After Fajr, you sit in the masjid and you do your adhkar and you recite Quran. You feel ready. You feel motivated, right? And this motivation, this enthusiasm in doing righteous deeds is something that is facilitated to you by Allah Azza wa Jal. So whoever works hard, and Allah sees sincerity in his heart, and he exerts the effort needed, following the commands of Allah according to the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, will be facilitated to goodness. His affairs will be taken care of. Now, the second class or category of people. We ask Allah's protection. But as for he who withholds and considers himself free of need and denies the best reward, we will ease him towards difficulty. So he withholds and sees no need for him from Allah. He feels sufficed. I'm it. I'm enough. Right? Just like it reminds me with the narration of, which is in Bukhari and Muslim, of the three people whom Allah Azza wa Jal tested. One was blind, one was bold, and one was afflicted uh, with uh, lipper, I guess. What was the, uh, some skin uh, uh, leprosy, right? It's called. Uh, and in the, in the story, when after they were granted wealth and all that, the angel came to test them and those who failed said, this is my wealth. I produced it. I did. It's the I, the me, right? And forgetting the source, neglecting gratitude. The result was that Allah Azza wa Jal deprived them from all of that. Now, some people feel that they don't need Allah amongst Muslims, right? They feel their intelligence is good enough, their power is good enough, their authority is good enough, their wealth is good enough. Whatever they possess is good enough and will take care of them. 
and they don't need Allah. They might not say we don't need Allah, but they act like we don't need Allah. You see, when you, when you disobey Allah Azza wa Jal, you're actually saying to Allah, no, I don't want to obey you. But you're saying it with your actions. When Allah Azza wa Jal says, pray and you don't pray, it's as if you're saying to Allah, I don't want to pray, I don't want to obey you and pray. I'm not going to obey you. When Allah Azza wa Jal says don't drink wine or alcohol or any intoxicant for that matter and you do it or one does it it's as if he's saying to Allah okay you say no and I'm saying yes I'm doing it he feels he doesn't need Allah he doesn't fear Allah when Allah facilitates the path of a person towards difficulty. Oh, what type of a life would that person be leaving, leading? What kind of a life would he be living? When Allah makes everything difficult and every step he makes, he faces difficulty. With his wife, he's always in fights. With his children, they're always disobedient. At the job, his boss is always on his back. Money are not, is not enough. Bills are too high. Health is always deteriorating. What else? Everything is going bad. وَمَا يُغْنِي عَنْهُ مَالُهُ إِذَا تَرَدَّى Now, this type of person, Allah Azza wa says, and what will his wealth avail him when he falls, when he dies, or when he is destroyed? Or, some scholars said, when he falls into hell. What benefit would his wealth or authority or power or rank in the society, right? Can any of that avail a person if Allah Azza wa Jalla has predestined that he is going to be doomed and destroyed and punished and thrown into hell? None of that is going to be of any benefit. Then the following verses, Allah Azza wa Jalla gives us the result, the destiny of each one of these two categories of people and before that Allah Azza wa Jal sets a foundation inna alayna lal huda indeed incumbent upon us is guidance okay so Allah Azza wa Jal wants you to go on the right path but he didn't neglect you out of his mercy, he made it incumbent upon, incumbent upon him to guide you by means of sending messengers, by means of sending books. So that no one would have any excuse with Allah Azza wa in the hereafter. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, Rusulam Mubashirina wa Mundirina li Alla Yakuna lil Nasi ala Allahi Hujjatum Ba'da Rusul. We sent messengers as bringers of good tidings and warners so that mankind will have no argument, no excuse against Allah after the messengers, meaning after the messengers were sent and the messages were sent and were clarified. And the path towards guidance was paved. And indeed, to us belongs the hereafter and the first, meaning this life. So, where is the escape? How can anyone escape when to Allah belongs the hereafter and this life? Where can you go? Where can anyone go?
and then the warning comes فَأَنذِرْتُكُمْ نَارٌ تَلَظَّى So I have warned you of a fire which is blazing. Allah is reminding mankind that He warned them the consequence of wickedness, of disbelief, of denial, of disobedience, of transgression. But Allah Azza wa Jal clarified to them before He will punish them. وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ As Allah says, وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبَعَثَ رَسُولًا We were not to punish until we sent a messenger. لَا يَصْلَاهَا إِلَّا الْأَشْقَى this fire, this blazing fire, none will enter to burn therein except the most wretched person. What can be more miserable than being burnt in fire? But then Allah explains who is this miserable person? What are the characteristics of this person? الَّذِي كَذَّبَ وَتَوَلَّى He is the one who had denied and turned away. He belied the message of Allah Azza wa Jal, turned away from the guidance of Allah Azza wa Jal, whom Allah Azza wa Jal sent to him in the form of messengers and messages. And Allah Azza wa Jal promised those who turned to him seeking guidance that he will facilitate that path to them or for them. And the believer, and this is uh, very important here to remember, many of the verses that uh, address the disbelievers have an aspect of it addressing the believers. A believer who turns away from the commands of Allah, disobeys Allah Azza wa Jal, and transgresses the boundaries set by Allah Azza wa Jal, resembles the kuffar, and therefore becomes deserving of this threat to be punished with the blazing fire in hell. This is one type of people, or class of people. But the righteous one will avoid it, avoid that blazing fire, right? So Allah Azza wa is setting this, facing this, the righteous facing the miserable, right? And then again explains who is this uh, righteous and pious person? What are his qualities and characteristics? الَّذِي يُؤْتِي مَا لَهُ يَتَزَكَّى وَمَا لِأَحَدٍ عِنْدَهُ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ تُجِزَى إِلَّا بِتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ رَبِّهِ الْأَعْلَى وَلَسَوْفَ يَرْضَى He who gives from his wealth to purify himself and not giving for anyone who has done him a favor to be rewarded but only seeking the countenance of his Lord Most High and he is going to be satisfied. He gives his wealth to purify. He gives up. He sacrifices. He spends for the purpose of purifying his soul and his heart. And he's not giving his wealth. He's not spending. He's not sacrificing. Intending or expecting reward or recompense from others. But... It is only for one reason. Seeking the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. Seeking expiation of his sins. He is not doing it for show or to pay someone back a favor he's done in the past or to be thanked by others. As Allah says, لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا. We don't want from you any reward or even thanks. 
I'm not doing this favor. So you say, thank you, brother. I don't even want that in return. You might say it, but I didn't do it to hear you say it. But I am doing it willingly for one reason, for the sake of Allah, for the pleasure of Allah, expecting and hoping the reward of Allah. Ibn Kathir alayhi, said that some scholars stated that it is the consensus of scholars of tafsir that this is referring, these verses are referring to Abu Bakr al-Siddiq he will be satisfied he will be content what can one expect when someone spends, gives up sacrifices for the sake of Allah in order to purify his soul for the sake of Allah purely for the sake of Allah what kind of reward would be expected from the most generous subhanahu wa ta'ala, the kindest subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal will make you satisfied in all aspects in this life. You will be satisfied with your provision. You'll be satisfied with the decrees of Allah Azza wa Jal. You'll lead a joyful life. Your heart will feel content about anything that happens. Brothers, wallahi, anyone who actually experienced this contentment with the decree of Allah would understand what I'm trying to say. It is a bliss. You'll feel regardless of your state. You feel that you possess this world. You know, you know when you're happy with Allah? When Allah makes you satisfied with anything that happens to you, this in itself is a favor from Allah. It's a, it's a great bounty. As a matter of fact, it's one of the greatest bounties after faith. It's to make you content with Allah, satisfied, pleased with everything that comes to you from Allah. Allah will overwhelm your soul and heart with satisfaction that would reflect on your behavior. Subhanallah. And then the end result, Allah will make you satisfied in the hereafter, in the result that you'll see in Jannah. And then the best of all is that Allah Azza wa Jal will bless you. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us amongst them by seeing Him subhanahu wa ta'ala in Jannah. Allahumma ameen. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal not to deprive us from seeing his face in Jannah. And we ask him to forgive our sins and to make us able to sacrifice, work, exert all efforts purely for his sake. So we become deserving of this satisfaction in this life and in the hereafter. With this we conclude Surah Al-Layn. Subhanakallahumma alhamdulillah. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruk.